Well, what's what's ironic, and I know y'all are really put in an untenable position under EMTLA, which mm -hmm. requires hospitals to deliver health care to everyone, whether they're insured or not insured. Right. And how y'all absorb those costs is, is, is really not something that any business would want to do, just knowing that you've got to deliver service without being able to recoup a lot of it. And, you know, I, we see that on our side of it, it, particularly from the standpoint of we know that some of that cost shifts occur. Mm -hmm. And what, bis what, what must business do to help y'all? I, I know things like health screening helps, uh, trying to encourage our, our employees to get into exercise routines. What else should businesses That's be encouraged? That's a great question. There's several ways that we have to work together. We have to reduce the cost of what, um, what we deliver. But business and individuals need to help us keep the population healthier because um, when, when patients do come to the healthcare system, uh, the costs are going to be incurred. We need to um, reduce that, more preventive care, yeah. uh, better health and fitness, as you, as you say. There's another interesting thing that business is helping us do, and that is teaching us how to improve our business practices, right. lean production models, um, Six Sigma uh, reliability kinds of issues. In fact, we just had a great visit um, about three weeks ago to the Riverbank Zoo with some of our people to learn how they manage animal health, right. which is in many ways different and in many ways similar to, to, pe to human health. So um, learning from business is a great thing that we need to do. Uh, for a long time, I think the healthcare system was arrogant and thought, yeah. you know, t treating people is not like making cars. Yeah. We we've gotten past that. We recognize there are a lot of things in manufacturing that we need to learn about reliability, consistency, variation. Well, one, I think, one of the issues that I know that drives health care costs way up is we, we don't get people into primary care early enough. And right. usually when they end up in, in your emergency room, it's a last resort for right. them. It, are there things that the hospitals are contemplating as we work with other primary care providers to ensure that we're getting health care to the individual at an earlier stage so that they don't end up at the most expensive care within our system. Absolutely. And regardless of what people think about the, the health care reform law that was passed and whether it stays in effect or not, one of the key messages there was we're not going to be paying you anymore for volume. Right. You've got to get the right outcome at the cheapest cost. And that means we've got to get into people's lives and help them manage their health, keep them out of the emergency room, keep them out of the hospital. That's how we're all better off. It's better for them, better for us, and better for those who pay the bills. Well, what's interesting, too, is I know that there are um, a lot of hospitals that are taking the training and produ uh, producing primary care providers, you know, they've taken that as part of their own. I know Greenville Hospital yeah, System, right. Spartanburg Hospitals are saying we go grow our own, that's right. our own doctors and so that we can have doctors in the communities that kind of help that. You want to talk a little bit about what those hospitals are doing to try well, to address that? Well, they are care. trying to, to, to increase the number of physicians we produce. Yeah. Now that, uh, I came to this job out of higher ed and uh, one of the challenges in, in the state in higher ed is a debate over how many of any particular major or degree we should produce because it costs the state money. That's that's not the conversation that I think we you and I need to yeah. have right now. It is, do we supply enough health professionals for our needs? Um, and that's the conversation that these universities and, and medical programs are having. We need enough primary care doctors. Now here's one of the problems, Otis. Our system um, doesn't pay primary care physicians as well enough. as it pays specialists. Oh, yeah. We pay in our country for doctors to do things, procedures. Yeah. Well, a primary care doctor who sits down and coaches you doesn't make nearly as much money as one who does a procedure yeah. on you. That is a fundamental flaw in our system, and it's got to be addressed. something's got to be addressed. Yeah, and that's yeah. why people don't want to go into primary care medicine. Uh, when you could be a dermatologist, you never take call, and you um, set your own hours, and you do much better. And we need dermatologists, but we do want uh, bright young physicians to go into primary care as well. Well, I, I know from at least from the business standpoint, we're fighting tort reform and trying to protect uh, at least our businesses from frivolous lawsuits. Right. I know that the medical profession, uh, medical profession faces that issue every day, and a lot of what uh, the medical profession does is preventing medicine to prevent healthcare right. uh, li litigation, things of that sort. How big a deal is that for the hospitals in, in their everyday everyday operations? I, I think it's a 
if we're talking about taking unnecessary costs out of health care, this is an important issue we've got to talk about. Uh, the classic tort reform model has been um, to address the damages side of liability. Right. If you're liable for uh, malpractice, we're going to limit how much the payout is. Right. I think the opportunity for us to save money here in healthcare is on the other side. That is, whether there's liability at all. Uh, we know so much more now from um, watching national data about what constitutes the right care for a heart attack right. or the right care for a stroke. And uh, the federal government is publishing that and saying, we're only going to pay you if you conform to the right evidence-based right. standards. And that's what we as patients want. Well, if the, the government is, can be that confident, and we can all agree that is the right care, why then can you be sued if you provide it that way? Why shouldn't we protect people who follow that? Um, got those guidelines. And, and yeah. then you get some comfort on the behalf of physicians um, who are not so inclined to over-order um, tests that rule out things they really don't think are there. Well, it's not an easy task. No, it's uh, not. not an easy uh, issue. And I know that uh, we're going to see a lot of debate, not only at the state level, but at the federal level over the next two years. And it's more than likely going to be the issue, if not uh, one of the top three issues that it's going to uh, create the debate uh, right. in the next election cycle. So, right. Thornton, thank you for being with us uh, this week. And we appreciate the article that Thornton is writing for us and for our uh, May-June magazine that will be focusing on health care healthcare uh, options and, and what businesses and what the providers and what the insurance I industry is doing to try to control costs for healthcare for our businesses and also make sure that our employees are covered. So thanks, thanks again and we look forward to the continued partnership between the South Carolina Business Community, South Carolina Hospital Association. Oh, it's a pleasure Otis and we know we have to help business keep costs down. We need business, business to help us learn how to do that better so we look forward to the partnership. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you for joining us on CEO Corner. Uh, we'll have a, another edition here very soon on issues that are real pertinent to the business community.